Bam, boom. What up, YouTube? If you're watching this video, because you is want to get more good at Red Out 2. And for some reason, you came to me. So I don't usually do tutorials, but I'm going to give a shot at this one. Shouldn't be too hard. I am, like, uh, the best at this game anyway. I am very humble, and I am going to uh, try my best to hopefully get everyone up to speed on how to get just better at playing this game, because I guess it is kind of unlike most other racing games out there uh, in its own niche. It is still very different. It is a five-axis uh, movement game, unlike uh, most other racing games, which are like two-axis or three-axis. So it definitely takes some getting used to. Uh, to summarize everything, uh, I'd recommend just uh, practicing more and playing all the tutorial levels, uh, just, you know, stick it out, keep at it, you will get better. Just, um, just try to put in the time. I've played over 300 hours so far. Before I considered myself really good, I think um, I had uh, somewhere around 50 at least. But uh, even then, when I was, in quote, good, I wasn't even um, anywhere near as good as I am right now. So, you'll get there. You just gotta keep playing. And then, uh, it'll make more sense as the more you play. Okay, I use a controller for this video game, specifically an Xbox controller. I hold it just like this. My middle fingers on the triggers, my pointer fingers on the bumpers, my thumbs on the sticks. When I need to uh, roll, I'll either take my left thumb and put it on the D-pad or my right thumb and then put that on the D-pad. I use the default control scheme. I feel personally it is just the best one to use, so it works for me. When I'm doing my trick heavy videos, then uh, sometimes I'll hold the controller like this where my ring finger is on the trigger, my middle finger on the bumper, pointer finger on the stick, and then my thumb rested on the D-pad. Usually though, it's just like this, where there's like a finger on every control. Okay, let's meet the cast. This is Lunaire. It favors steering and a little bit of emphasis on top speed. This is the Conqueror. It favors strafing and top speed. No emphasis whatsoever in steering. This is the Helix. It favors top speed and thrust. This is the Acera. It favors durability and thrust. The Isa AGR. Favors nothing in particular. The Wallace favors steering. The Sula, Solha, however it's pronounced, favors heavy emphasis and thrust and top speed. Mantis favors thrust. At Hall Tech favors top speed and stability. Connensworth favors durability, strafing, and stability. Behemoth favors strafing and durability. Buran favors durability and thrust. Uh, early game, all this crap made sense, but late game, once you have most of the parts and lots, you can pretty much build any ship however you want it. Uh, you can't make every ship totally redundant because all these base stats are permanent base stats. So whatever you put on top of it, you're always gonna get this 15 you know, speed boost compared to whatever other ship I just had on. You know what I mean? So, early game, you're gonna wanna switch ships a lot for whichever one is, uh, you know, you need at that moment in time, but late game, doesn't really matter. Just pick a favorite. Uh, I run the Wallace, because I thought that steering was really, really cool. And uh, you don't really see Wallace on top of the leaderboards too often, so wanted to be different, unique, special, sparkle my own way, so that's the one that I use. But you can use whatever you want. Doesn't matter. And about these stats right here, uh, we'll look at the spider graph. Uh, starting from the top, the durability, that is your whole strength and cooldown efficiency. So as you gain heat by boosting or just being in a hot place, uh, the higher durability you have means that you will your ship will cool down faster. It also means that once you inevitably burn into your hull, uh, it'll take a longer amount of time before you uh, totally burn out and explode. 
so you want as high durability as you possibly can get away with. Next, thrust is your acceleration strength while boosting. So the higher thrust you have, uh, the greater acceleration through boosting you will gain, which means more top speed when you're boosting. Uh, also, the higher the thrust at, the higher heat you'll accumulate, higher amount of heat you'll accumulate. So if you have a lot of thrust, you need a lot of durability to counteract that extra heat by all the thrust. Next, top speed is uh, mostly a higher cruising speed. By cruising, I mean just holding down the accelerator. Uh, so the higher that uh, top speed stat is, means the faster you will go without boosting. But it also means uh, you have a slightly higher cap while boosting. They kind of go together, obviously, but um, pretty much uh, the meta is around the fourth run of uh, top speed. You don't need to go too far beyond that. Um, you want as much as you can get away with, obviously, but uh, it's not like you can have all of it all the time. So it's something you're just going to have to uh, figure out and work in how much you need for whatever. Stability, uh, arguably one of the most important stats there is. Uh, the more stability you have, the better grip you have to the track and the better speed retention you have while changing direction. What that means, uh, <clears throat> so by grip in an anti-gravity game, basically means that uh, it's, it's harder for the ship to change direction without your consent. Um, and when you do change directions, you just, you, you kind of retain more speed. It, it makes more sense when you, when you look at a lower speed or lower stability build versus a high stability build. It feels way different. Low stability build, uh, it's easier to drift around, but it's, uh, it takes longer to accelerate from that drift. So your momentum, it, it, it's, it takes more effort to uh, change your momentum than it does a high stability build. High stability build, you keep more of that momentum wherever you want it. So if you're uh, drifting around in a high stability build or whatever, you keep more of that momentum going into whatever new direction that you choose. Whereas a low stability build, any of that momentum you gain is forced in whatever direction that momentum was already going. Man, I hope that made sense. Just, just try a low stability build, try a high stability build, it'll make more sense. Uh, but you want as much stability as you possibly can get away with. Steering is uh, sort of like steering strength while going fast. So uh, I think I've seen a video where someone tested a low, st uh, low steering and high steering while not moving at all, and they moved at the exact same speed. So it definitely does make a difference when you're going fast. So I'm guessing that uh, low steering versus high steering is uh, steering strength while going fast. So when you're going slow, uh, well, when you're going fast with a low steering build, um, it's it's not gonna you're gonna understeer a lot. If you have a high steering build, then um, it's it's not like you're gonna oversteer, but you're gonna steer a lot easier at going way faster speeds. So you want as much as uh, you need really for steering. For strafing, uh, that is power while strafing. So the higher strafe amount you have, the faster your ship will move uh, left and right. Not steer left and right, or turn left and right, move left and right, strafing, you know? Like in a first person shooter or whatever, you know what strafing is, come on. All right, let me show you some builds. Uh, this is the, uh, after I beat the game, this is pretty much the first build I had. Very low durability, but extremely high steering stability because at the time I thought that that was really really cool to have but uh, when I started playing online I noticed that uh, yeah that build sucks it's it can uh, really outpace the uh, nightmare AI especially on any track that isn't Fuji because Fuji's almost like a straight line to the AI so they just go really 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 fast but uh, yeah this was dominating all the other tracks so I thought it was really good when I came across other human players though with actual good builds and uh, steel, um, yeah, it, it pretty much eliminated that one. So I had to try some uh, other builds. Um, I think my next one was somewhere around uh, here. So 
a little bit more evened out, less steering, and then uh, went on to this build, more top speed, uh, around the same durability. Then I uh, eventually moved to this build, which is the one that I currently use. And this one's also a lot closer to the uh, meta that uh, you see in the top times of the leaderboards. The main difference, uh, most people have more steering, less strafing, but I wanted the edge strafe. And um, steering strafe, if you know the track good enough, you can get away with having a lesser amount of one or the other. But uh, this feels nice to me to drive on pretty much any track, so this is what I use for every track. Uh, online it does pretty well in most all cases. Time trials, there's only a couple of tracks where I would really have to change if I want to go for a top time. But um, ain't nobody got time for that. I don't have time for that. So uh, I don't really grind too hard. I mean, I could, I could get top time if I felt like it, but you know, wh who has time, right? Uh, anyway. All right, so I'm in the middle of making this and I'm uh, discovering, I can't really force you to learn to be good at this game. So I'm just gonna do some tutorials, which I think are important and um, talk you through, I, I guess summarize what they're trying to teach you. Strafe in a corner and strafe in probably a number one thing in this game besides steering and uh, speed. The very first thing the game teaches you is how to strafe. You should be able to take these uh, first few corners without steering at all. little balls, it doesn't tell you what these are. These are a uh, recommended racing line. Because this is a racing game, so you can play it just like any other racing game. It's just more access of movement than uh, what you're used to. The accelerator is uh, totally analog, so the more you press in, the faster it'll go. You don't have to press it in all the way the entire time. Same thing with the brake. You can also let off the gas to uh, slow down that way for uh, tighter turns. Strafe and uh, steer in the same direction to uh, tighten your driving line. You can also strafe and steer in opposite directions to widen it and or drift. There's a lot of options in uh, taking corners. If you've noticed uh, strafing doesn't uh, remove any speed. It's, uh, it's pretty much free. However, steering uh, does. So that's why they came with the saying one time ago, straight more, steer less. Pretty much just the basic tutorial here. Um, my suggestion, if there's any, you know, if, if it looks like it's a, a dip or incline or whatever, just pitch. That way, you know, you'll almost be guaranteed to uh, never scrape a wall unless you're going extremely fast.
left boost is a uh, hold on boost. You have to hold it for it to work. Some people in desperation, when their health is really low, they'll uh, just keep boosting to the very edge of uh, where their heat meter is, like right now. That's uh, not recommended to use all the time unless you're very, very desperate because it really doesn't help all that much. It really works better the longer you hold it down. Um, hyper boost with the right bumper. Uh, hyper boost is that uh, green gauge there in the center there. And um, that recharges. Uh, that, that's activated after 25 seconds of the race starting. And it recharges after so many seconds of inactivity. And there's a bar that constantly refills. Uh, that's a toggle on, so once you hit that, it's on until you either hit the button again or hit the brake to turn it off. And uh, while hyper-boosting, you can uh, stack the normal boost on top of it by just pressing LB while you're hyper-boosting to go even faster. But that'll burn through your heat and hole even quicker as well. Uh, if you have to choose between one or the other, hyper-boost if there's any sort of straight line, and normal boost if there's like a slight turn or whatever. Uh, regular boosting is more for getting up to speed and just going a little bit faster sometimes, but hyper boosting is for going extremely fast and leaving everyone else in the dust. Even by itself, hyper boosting alone is faster than uh, normal boosting. When you're in the air as well, uh, hyper-boosting will give you more thrust and uh, let you travel a lot farther than uh, no normal boosting. So if there's a really hard jump or something, save your hyper for that. sit through another 90 seconds. While you're in play mode, all the same controls work just as normal, only now you have rolling to worry about as well. Steering in air doesn't really get you as far as you might think it does, so strafing works best. But sometimes you do have to steer in the air as well. You want to try to land as uh, perfectly perpendicular to the ground as you possibly can. Or depending on how you think parallel. Uh, you know, I guess it depends on your uh, personal definition of the word. You want to land flat on the ground.
might have mentioned in another clip, I don't know, gravity is a constant force that's pulling on you, so you have to pay attention to uh, where your orientation is and then uh, be able to fight gravity while in the air to land on certain jumps. That's something I'll just have to practice and get used to. There's uh, these little arrows right at the uh, entrance of all these jumps that tell you which way gravity is facing. Or gravity is pointing in. That way uh, can help you orientate yourself before you uh, leave the jump. They're kind of hard to see on some of the jumps, so uh, you really have to uh, just know the track really well or really keep an eye out for them. That one was kind of obscured by the sign, but... You ever see that arrow there? Might have been too fast. I see that arrow there that's pointing to the right at the end of this uh, runway here. Those two chevrons, right where the uh, hazard is, right over. See them floating right there atop the screen? Watch out for those. They should be on most every jump, I think, and they'll tell you which way gravity is pointing. See how we're falling down right now, and if we just fall, we're just going to shift automatically towards that direction. Because that's, you know, down from where we are. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, this tutorial teaches about um, purposely detaching yourself from the track. On certain ramps, you can uh, pitch up, and that'll force you off the track if you're going fast enough. Uh, the orange walls that are perforated, you can also uh, pitch up on, and if you hit them at the right angle, you will uh, climb over them. So it's useful for uh, doing purposeful shortcuts or just uh, screwing around and flying all over the place. I thought that was going for some reason. Let's talk about traps and uh, hazards. So now there's uh, 12 environments-ish. Uh, we'll start with this one, Mount Fiji, based off the fictional island of uh, Japan. Um, it's, it's basically just Earth, so whatever you find on Earth, 
It's a uh, you know normal temperature, normal atmosphere, like Earth-like temperature, atmosphere, whatever. It's it's Earth, dude. You go outside. That's what it's like. Old Cairo, uh, northern Africa. It's hot. That's about it. Your heat builds quicker in hot areas on the traps, so you want a little bit more durability. Uh, Mars, it's like Earth, but like a little less. It's like diet Earth and a little more red orange. But we terraformed it, so there's some green and purple in there too. It's weird, but it's yeah, it's pretty similar to whatever else. Tartarus Mines, um, based on the fictional planet Io, uh, which isn't a planet. It's actually a moon, uh, Jupiter's moon. So never mind. Um, it's a mine on an asteroid or whatever, and uh, it's it's just hot. It's it's hot. It's, it's like if you played Doom, it's like that, but it's a race track. So you want a very high uh, durability to survive that. Mariana Trench, uh, you know, is, is under the water uh, really far. So it's uh, the gravity is very dense because the weight of uh, water, like six miles down, is extremely heavy. It's like, it, I can't fathom how heavy that is. It is extremely heavy. So your ship is going to, uh, it's going to be like it has more stability. So you can get away with having less stability when you're underwater. And uh, underwater is also very cold because it's water, so you don't need as much durability to use as much thrust. Uh, cloud ocean, the atmosphere is very thin because you're high up in the clouds. You know, like, have you seen Star Wars? It's like that. You're in the clouds. Um, you don't need as much thrust to get as far. Uh, the gravity is a little low, but um, heat buildup feels the same. Uh, Neo Tokyo, based on the fictional uh, city of Tokyo, on a different planet that isn't Earth, surprisingly. I think that's the lore, I don't remember. Um, it's, it's basically like Earth, it's just like Earth, only a lot more purple. Genesis, based off the moon. Um, Lunar City is in a, a, like an Earth dome kind of environment, so it's like Earth. And uh, the other ones have zero gravity environments where the gravity is just like isn't there, so you just kind of fly away. But um, I mean, you're still on like the moon, which has gravity, so it's still there, but just it is not as much. You, you kind of got to believe it's there, and then you'll feel it. Uh, it's extremely cold out on the moon because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. It has, it has an extremely thin atmosphere. You can't see a sky on the moon. It's just space, you know? Uh, the origin black hole. Uh, it's you're right next to a black hole too close too close to a black hole than you'd ever want to be uh, The atmosphere is extremely Well, it says there the atmosphere is very thin. All right. Yeah, the atmosphere is thin, but the gravity is uh, Beyond that stream because you're by a black hole So anytime you're not magnetically attached to the track you're flying towards the black hole whether you like it or not um, if you try going to the origin black hole early game in your personal ship, you'll have a very horrible time because your ship probably doesn't have enough power to make it past the jumps. Um, I'll give you some tips for that when we get to that track later on. Caribbean Dam, it's like an Earth, but like at the beach. Terra Roops uh, is on Mercury. Uh, the atmosphere is thin. Gravity is Earth-like, surprisingly. Maybe it is, I don't really know. Uh, in this game, Mercury is hot and cold. So uh, when you're more in the spacey bits, it's cold, but when you're in the magma bits, it's hot. I don't know, it's Mercury, it's right by the sun. You know, the sun is horrible. Vertex is a virtual environment. Uh, Digit Thunder is like Mariana's Trench, it's very wet. Uh, the other ones are uh, sort of like Earth-like environments, I guess. Finger Bites, though, is uh, pretty hot, it's based off the red up one track that was in the volcano, so that's why it's hot. Data Miner, though, is, um, I think it's mostly uh, Earth-like, although it says it has low, lower gravity. I guess it does. In the virtual environment, it's uh, kind of hard to tell. And that's the tracks. Let's uh, race one. <coughs> uh, let's talk uh, track strategies. Uh, this kind of touch in with uh, my track intro video, I guess. Um, Mount Fuji, use a uh, speed build because it's mostly uh, straights. Old Cairo, uh, a lot of straights, a lot of weird sort of 3D chains you're going to want to look out for. But um, 
It also benefits from a really high speed Mars Memorial. A lot of high speed, a lot of turns, so you can get away with uh, uh, high steering builds and high speed builds. You know, you kind of use whatever you want. Tartarus Mines, there's a lot of trickery there you want, especially high durability and um, uh, kind of higher steering, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, Mariana Trench, you can get away with having lower durability and lower stability and, uh, you know, dump it all in uh, speed and uh, thrust or steering or whatever else. Uh, Cloud Ocean, there's uh, quite a lot of straights, so uh, it benefits from really high top speed. Neo Tokyo uh, benefits most from steering above all else. Well, steering and stability above all else, even durability. In some cases, you can get away with having lower durability because there are just so many turns, so many tight little turns. Genesis, um, the zero G sections, uh, you don't really need as much durability because your whole, you know, it's so cold that you don't build up as much heat, so you can get away with having less durability and higher top speed or steering or whatever else. Origin Black Hole, you want extremely high stability because as the black hole pulls you, you know, in uh, the direction that it's going, uh, more stability means that uh, the gravity from the black hole will pull your ship even faster, which I don't know why that makes sense, but that's how that works. So you want high stability for the black hole. And uh, there's also a lot of turns and it also benefits from top speed, but uh, I think above all else, you just want most stability. Caribbean Dam, you want high speed, uh, high durability. Steering, I don't think is too bad, but there's some tricky sections in there where you want a lot of steering as well. Terra Roops, you want very high thrust, high top speed, high durability above all else. Uh, Vertex, Digit Thunder, it's the uh, same as Mariana's Trench. Uh, Finger Bites is um, pretty much the same as Tartarus Mines, but like a diet Tartarus Mines, because it's not quite as hot. Data Mire, pretty much whatever you use for, um, well, it's not quite like Mars, it's like Mars and Fiji had like a, a little love baby child thing. So you want like high top speed. There are a lot of open sections. Um, a lot of the Red Out 1 tracks too, mostly, uh, I think top speed actually does kind of go above all else. Because there, there are so many straight sections. So high thrust, high top speed, high stability, probably for the Vertex ones. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you a little bit of hand cam footage of uh, me playing the game. So if you're struggling with doing everything, I don't know, hopefully this will uh, help you out. Just gonna be using the arcade Wallace. And uh, forgive any misstatements, please. I'm not used to uh, playing with a camera directly in my face.
Alright, this video is getting way longer than I thought it would be. So, uh, basically to summarize everything, uh, what I recommend highly, go into arcade, hit Y, triangle, whatever it is, do this, training mode, train on the traps, memorize the traps, get good at doing the traps, and... And also get some of these. This is a uh, pretty difficult racing game. The tracks are uh, pretty brutal, I guess, as uh, quite a few reviews have mentioned. But um, it's definitely worth it, in my opinion, if you uh, really miss AG racing games, like when you were a kid or whatever, and there's just nothing out that's good. This is a good game. You just need to uh, work at it. You need to want it. I want it. That's why I got real good at it. Memorize the tracks and uh, you should do the same because it is so much fun once you uh, can know what's coming next and uh, take it at speed. It is so satisfying. So, but you have to put in the work. Sorry folks, that's a basic answer. You have to practice. That's how you get good. I can't force it down. Uh, I can't force you just to be good. You have to work on it yourself. If there's any uh, really pressing things that you're just super struggling with, please leave a comment and uh, I'll uh, address it as best as I possibly can. I also highly recommend you join the Red Hot Discord, which I'll uh, post a link in the description, I guess. There's a ton of people on there that are willing to help out newcomers and just people struggling in general and all that stuff. So uh, thanks for watching. I really hope that this helped.